Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to continue our series talking about Ceph, different concepts in Ceph and how to set up a Ceph cluster. We left off the last time that we had set up a cluster and today we are going to continue setting up a file system. And a file system in Ceph is built upon the cluster of radios. So you still have this object store that is distributed, but they put a file system on it. And this is a simple standard POSIX file system, but it has some limitations. So for instance, if you do a large listing of all the files in your cluster, or if you use the find commands and so on, it could be good to think about how you run these commands because usually when you do an ls you do lsal for instance and you will get all the statistics and information about the files and perhaps you don't need all that data because that will take a little bit longer and needs to fetch more me metadata from your system. If you are just saying, I want to write to this specific file in the system and you know the path, it's pretty much the same as using an object store. So be careful how you use the different uh, Linux commands or Windows commands to gather data about your cluster, because some of them will impact the performance of your daily use. So let's switch over here to my screen. And here you can see my little client. Um, so this is a client machine that I usually set up just to uh, work with my cluster. We had three nodes, node one, two, and three. Um, and now the first thing we want to do is add some metadata services. And these are running in memory and helps you and gets fast access to the specific metadata for your files because that will not be an operation that you want to be slow. You want that, oper that op operation to be really fast so you can't really go down to disk every time to fetch metadata. So we need to add metadata servers and we can start with node one and here we want to first off create a directory that should be in var lib ceph MDS and then Ceph dash Ceph is the name of the cluster. So name of the cluster dash and then what you want what this node is named in my case n1 and we need a little bit of a password there. After that we need to create a key ring and it's not that much uh, information here. Uh, you get to create an MDS n1 and then so this is the name again of the node. And then the monitor should have the profile of MDS, the manager should have a profile of MDS, and MDS allow everything and OSD allow everything. And we create that user and put that information into the key ring. So uh, the directory is not owned by me. So let's do sudo t instead like that. That should be allowed. So now we have put this key ring in there. So I will change up my script a bit here. So if we cat this file, we should get the same information. Um, with sudo, of course. Yeah, so now we have this MDS key here and it's on, the only use of that key is to read it and start our service. So in this case, we should be able to just run system control start and the MDS value, in this case, MDS one. Uh, so if we look at the Ceph here, we see that we have started one service for node one uh, using the, the deep darting. If we switch over to our screen here, we see that we have no metadata service because we have no file system. So they will be added to the file system when you add them. You, there is a command to join a metadata server into your file system, 
So you can have multiple file systems and say this metadata server should join this file system and this metadata server should join this file system. Hopefully we will not be required to do that as we create the file system after we have the metadata servers. But that's something that is totally valid as well. So now we have created that metadata service. So let's go out over to the second node here and we will do the same operations here pretty much and run this keyring again. Uh, let's see, I did it wrong, wrong, wrong. Our lib Seth MDS Seth M3. I want M2. Uh, so let's create that directory. We will create that keyring. We will start that service. Enable that service. So let's do the last one so we get the same information there. Um, put in the last one, create the metadata service for the third node. And we create a keyring and start that node. So, yeah, so now we have created all of the metadata services. We should have one in a started here as well. So let's enable that one. So now the metadata services are created, started and enabled. And now we want to create our pools. So if we look over here, we see that we have for the first off no file system. And when we look at the pools, we, the only pool that we have here is our uh, health metrics. And I think you could create a pool here if you like. So you give it a name and a pool and so on. So let's do that. Replicate uh, out of scale on three and compression, none. We don't have any max bytes. And we give this the pool name of Ceph FS data. Um, so that's one way you can do this. And then it will just create a pool for you. So, but I usually use the command line. So if we go back here, I can do the same pretty much by just saying I want to create a pool on my OSDs and I want it to have 32 placement groups. So I create this FS data with 32 placement groups and that's pretty much a way to take the hashed values that you want to put out. So you have keys with hash, hashed keys that you want to save in your cluster and those hashed values will be segmented into multiple different groups and those groups will then be placed on all your um, hardware. So for instance, now that I only have three, three uh, hard drives, I suspect that all placement groups will be put on all hard drives. But if you have that much more hard drive, then you will they, it will look at each different hard drive and put some of the placement groups there and see that you always have three of them. So you have three copies. So these are segments that will have multiple copies on your hardware. So let's create that with 32. So it takes a little bit, bit of a while and it, then it has created this FS data. And if we look here, we see that it uh, ended up here. So we have FS data and with three replications and 32 active and clean uh, pages. And then we want to create the metadata also. This will keep all the information like file size, permissions, uh, groups and users and so on. So it, all the metadata that you usually keep in the file system records uh, will be kept in the metadata. And this is the um, pool that also our MDS will read from 
when they want to fetch data. And then we want to create our file system. Pretty easy. We just say Ceph FS new, call it Ceph FS. And I want Ceph FS metadata as my metadata and data as my pool. And the reason that that pool is the last one is because you can have multiple pools as data pools. And then you can say that this specific directory should be in this pool. So if you have large amounts of data in different directories in your file systems, you can separate them out in multiple pools. And you can also create multiple file systems if you want that in order to separate your data and be more specific about this specific data I want to save in this pool, uh, which is on these hard drives and this I want to save in this pool. So you can segment things in a, a lot of ways. If we look at this Ceph FS LS, we should see that we have this FS with a metadata pool. And then you see that we have an array of data pools. And in this case, I only have one of them, but you can have multiple. So if we go back here, we see that we created out uh, our uh, metadata and it's currently updating. We also see that we updated our health metrics pool. It has a lot of different um, active uh, pages here. I don't really know why we had so many of them. And the metadata got a lot of active pages as well. Um, if we look at the file system here, we see that we now have a file system called CFFS with no clients. And we have one active um, MDS which uh, have some data saved to it. And we have two standby demos here, N2 and N1. So let's uh, make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see for you. So N2 and N1 is standby demons, and then we have an active daemon up here. And if we look at our dashboard, we need now see that we have metadata service, one active and one standby. And we haven't really used any of our drives yet. Now we have uh, that set up. We uh, should be able to uh, run the statistics of our MDS. And we see now that we have one file system. We have uh, N3, which is up and active, and then two standbys. So there's a way you also can see this data from the command line. And next up, we need to have a user so we can actually save and um, read data from our file system, of course. And that's very simple as well. There is a lot of different tutorials where you can do very specific things and set that this should be like the, this way and so on. Um, but this is the simplest way. You just say FS, file system, authorize for the file system of CephFS and I want to create a client. So in that specific sub uh, category and I will call this FS user. And in this file system, I want the root to be read write. So you can say I want the root to be readable but not writable. And then a bunch of uh, directories uh, further down, you can say that this directory should be writable for this specific client. So you have a lot of options there. But as I said, there is a lot of other things that you can set up. Problem is that if you give specific, um, specific help for uh, specific permissions for different things. So for instance, saying I want permissions for a specific pool or something like that, then you can run on into problems when you create a caching pool, for instance, and you don't have permission for that. I got that issue. <laughs> so this is a way that you create a user that is specific to this file system and not to a specific pool. So when I've created this user, I will get a key here. And this is my file system key for this specific user. And that is what I want to use in order to mount. So if I go back to my client here, I run sudo vi etc uh, fs tab. And in this specific file, um, and I have the CephFS tools installed on my client as well. So it is a client for file systems. Here I add now a mounting option. So I have node one with the port of node one for that monitor. 
and then I have node 2, and the monitor port, mode 3, monitor port, and then slash. So in the file system root, I want to mount that. I want to mount that to CephFS in my file system. And uh, this is a Ceph file system. And then I need some options. So name the uh, FS user secret. That's what we created uh, now. So let's copy that and put it in here. And then we have no a time and net dev. Uh, good options to put in here. So uh, I don't really know exactly what they do, but they are uh, uh, suggested by the uh, uh, tutorials. And then we have dump and pass, which is zero and two. Um, so that's the way I configure these at least. And then let's create CephFS the directory. It already exists. So let's mount it. Uh, we'll do sudo there as well. And we should be able to go into CephFS and we have an empty directory. If we look at our mounts, we see that we have CFFS mounted there. And see if I have something here, we can move some OpenJDK to uh, CFFS, for instance, copy it over there. And we need to be a root. So if I go over here now, I can see that I should have some client traffic. And there we see we have some client traffic. I don't know if we will actually see anything in the raw capacity because it's not that large, but we see that we have used a little bit more uh, data here, so 204 megabytes are used in our cluster. And if we look at the pools, we can see uh, no data. We can see some uh, kilobytes of data there. I don't know if this pool has updated yet, but we have written some data to the CFFS pool. So we can uh, try if we want to unmount the SFFS. That should be something that we can do. If we look here, there is no files. If we mount it again and look there, we have that file copied over. So we have some files in our file system. Um, so this is not that hard to set up and it's very useful and you get redundant data with at least three copies. Other things that you can do, as I said earlier, create more file systems, create more pools that are your data pools. You can also, well, if you don't want to use the specific configuration of three replicas, you can create crush rules where you create uh, these kind of RAID, sim similar to RAID configurations. So you have, can, can have something similar to RAID 6 or something like that. There where you have a parity um, a disk or a parity OSD and then have the other pages uh, is the specific data. So if you lose one, you can restore it and so on. So you can have those specific uh, crush rules set up if you want. But usually I just set three copies and that makes things secure. Uh, this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.